In this video, I want to talk a little bit more about the boy knitting looms, and I may make a couple of these videos as I realize things that I can make with these. Um, when I said yesterday in the first uh, video on this that I have all the different, um, not all of them, but I have many of the authentic knitting board looms. I have um, several that are 28 inch boards, I have a couple of 38 inch boards. I have an 18 inch board, um, I have the one that converts to a weaving loom, and then I have um, like five of the sock looms. So those are the way I used to do things where if I were going to make a worsted pair of socks, I would get the worsted weight loom out. And so the reason I'm telling you this is because if I'm going to switch to, these are all bulky weight. They, they knit best at bulky weight. You can use single strand, um, but they just knit. I've made things single strand, and I've made them bulky. And I've even made them three strand on these looms. I have a teddy bear, and wait till you see the teddy bears. I have a new teddy bear pattern um, that I have to type up. Um, they're adorable. Um, I even knit three strands on one of these to make a teddy bear. But the three strands knits very difficult, and I don't I don't want to get off topic here. But since yesterday, um, I make bracelets, and you can see this is my kind of cousin it arm. Um, cousin it was in the Adams family, and these this is a spool knit piece um, in yarn that I did with the purple spool knitter which you can see right there. And what I was doing was using yarn to work out an idea for one of my bracelets. Um, so now, as soon as I put it on the arm, I know whether or not I'm going to like that as a bracelet. But here's the other thing. What I need, um, now I already know this can be a bedroll, these can be the china covers, these can be um, a set for the dogs. Um, so I get the bracelets out because I'm working on the bracelets, and I realize, okay, the 26-peg um, loom or the 24-peg green round loom can be the sleeve for the arm that I need when I pack this up. I don't want it to get scratched and, and um, you know, marked up and stuff like that. And then I'm thinking, well, I have metal tins that I keep my bracelets in. This makes a, a tin case so that the, the tins don't get destroyed. Um, I have a larger tin. Here's the tin. Here, um, I'm currently, this is going to be about 33 inches wide, but with the landscape design that I'm also kind of working on, um, I have two sizes, 28 inches square, which, by the way, is also um, seven quilted squares by seven rows down of four inch um, squares, fabric squares. If I make this a pillowcase size page, I can then use it to display my bracelets. Like if I go to a craft fair or something, I put this over a piece of plywood and then pin the bracelets to the page and there I have my little market. So, I mean, this is where I, I suggest that these looms are actually pushing creativity because all of a sudden, almost everything I pick up, I'm like, well, wait a minute, I could make this for that. So, and then, now this morning, this is one of my oil paintings. And um, this seizure that I had in December 22nd really was a, a very bad one. And um, I actually couldn't speak English for about five days. I couldn't get help for about five days. There was no one around. Um, I finally grabbed a neighbor. I scared the heck out of the neighbor because when I started talking, I wasn't speaking English. She got terrified. Um, it's, you know, it became a whole thing. I went to the hospital. I went to the neurologist. It was a whole thing. And I lost what I think I lost in that seizure is a lot of my art history, which was devastating um, because, you know, I've been a fine artist really since I was five. I've been an artist. I was a fine artist starting in high school. So um, 
it was devastating to lose everything, so I'm rebuilding it back. And you saw my videos on landscape design. Now I'm kind of pushing myself with creativity and color. And just the color of the looms being all those bright colors, that gets the brain going because the brain has to sort those colors out. So for those of you who don't have seizures, um, they're happy, bright colors that are just going to help you. Whereas the authentic knitting boards are wood and metal. Mine, um, a couple of them have nylon pins, but they're very mellow and neutral. And if you want to just push your brain into thinking about color and art, then these are wonderful. But, so I have to get these out, and um, I had these all out. There are a few I have to renumber because I label each one and give it a number and everything. And I put it all away last night because I st my head just started to hurt so bad. And so I have to push myself back to this. And I'm using the looms to pop that color and make me organize it again. Now, I've already started a couple of paintings, so I have the ability still to paint. I just can't organize it in my thinking very well. So I got stubborn with myself. I'm kind of arguing with myself over this. I, got, I just got the, all the oil paintings back out, and again, I realized um, art storage is uh, complex because they have to be stored certain ways. This is oil. Um, you want to keep dust off of it. You, you want to keep, um, it, you want to protect it. This one is not varnished. A lot of times people varnish them. I don't like varnish because it yellows. Um, so this is just oil paint. And um, so what I wanted to do was make covers for each of my paintings. And look at this. This is, that's the 26 peg loom. I could also use the, probably the 24 peg loom. And I make bags, and every one of my paintings has a cover. And then that cover can go with the painting if I sell the painting. And I can do this. Um, this is why I may still need the 38-inch Afghan board, because I have a few paintings that are, um, they must be 24. They're at least, well, I think the biggest I have is like 36 wide, so I'm not sure that this biggest loom would make the cover. And this is the process that I was talking about, is can I use these looms for everything? So if I needed to make a cover for a 36 inch wide painting, I would need to flatten it on this orange loom and then stitch the two pieces together into a bag. But, so yes, I could still do that. So, um, you know, when you're artistic, and even when you have a seizure and you lose your art history, like I couldn't remember Da Vinci's name the other day. I'm hoping that's the kind of thing that I forgot. I still remember Picasso, and I know exactly how Picasso got to his paintings. But I can't remember... Um, like with the icons, the religious icons. I can't remember all the details that I used to remember about how that all started, um, where in Russia they dig up the pigment, you know, things like that. But um, here are bracelet applications and fine art painting applications that, again, 10 looms. Um, and with the bracelets, these can then, these are like... Um, um, like a muslin for a dress would be. I'm just stitching it up to see if I like the way it looks in color before I make it out of, um, I use copper, um, brass, uh, silver. So now when this is done, I can stitch those together and make a rug out of all my bracelet mock-ups. So everything is all connected, and if these looms fill in, um, you know, like I would have gotten out a sock loom to do covers for the um, paintings, but if I can do it with these uh, 10 looms, and the, the type of fabric, this actually would protect a painting, but also let air in and out, 
whereas this heavy bulky doesn't let any air in and out. So it's just another point of mentioning with the boy knitting looms.